we've managed to accomplish a lot in a relatively short amount of time. We've already sent humans to live in space and to the moon. We've developed massive and very sophisticated telescopes. We've even sent robotics to Mars, and of course probes to the edge of the solar system. Many organisations decided to take it a step further. The European Space Agency, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and NASA have been working very hard to find out if we're completely alone. Today we have a big number of projects that are made to scan the stars for signs of intelligent life. Despite our efforts we've yet to make contact, we still have no idea what could be out there. Our solar system is pretty old. Scientists are still trying to figure out how old it really is. The clues we have have been gathered from meteorites. These suggest our solar system could be nearly 5 billion years old. The number of known star systems and mysterious worlds keeps on expanding, but our creative methods of listening to space have yet to reveal anything that resembles any kind of extraterrestrial communication or civilization. So today we take a look at some places where we could find alien life. Europa Jupiter is well known as the gas giant. It's the next planet beyond Mars in our solar system. Jupiter is thought to have no life on it no matter how hard we imagine, but it has its icy moons and Europa is one of them. Europa has a lot of potential as a candidate. From 1995 up to 2003, NASA's Galileo mission was the first one designed to orbit the planet Jupiter and study its icy moons. It collected data and images in the Jovian system and passed Europa 12 times. According to the data and pictures collected by the spacecraft, Europa has a layered structure just like Earth, a crust of ice, a rocky mantle and an iron-rich core. The measurements of the magnetic field found an electric current inside. There is a salty liquid ocean beneath this extremely thick crust of ice, and it seems to be around the entire planet. In 2022, the European Space Agency and NASA have planned to launch another mission. The goal of this mission will be to get close to Europa. The spacecraft Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer will take over seven years to actually reach the system. It's been announced by the space agency that it will do two flyovers on Europa, and while there the spacecraft will also check out Jupiter's other icy moons. Europa Clipper is however NASA's mission. Europa is the main target of this mission, but instead of orbiting Europa, Europa Clipper will be orbiting Jupiter. This is to dip in and out of its radiation belt. Over three and a half years, and Europa Clipper will manage to carry out at least 45 very close flybys of Europa. Enceladus Jupiter's neighbour Saturn is also one of the top targets in search for alien life, especially its two moons Titan and Enceladus. Cassini was a spacecraft who arrived in the Saturn system back in 2001. It made over 120 flybys of Titan and 23 flybys of Enceladus. The Cassini mission ended on the 15th of September 2017. This is due to the loss of contact. Cassini took a close look at Enceladus. It was not the airless icy body as it was previously assumed. The detection of the thermal infrared and the four tiger stripes would mean that Enceladus heats up from the inside. It's believed that friction caused by gravitational forces of Saturn has been affecting the heating of Enceladus. On our planet, hydrothermal vents are filled with organisms we cannot see anywhere else. All these microbes get their energy from the nutrients and the rich mineral fluids that come from the Earth's core. This is where Enceladus might be hiding its secrets. One of the exciting findings were the excess of hydrogen and grains of nanosilica. These can only form in very hot waters. Knowing this, there is the evidence of hydrothermal vents on the seafloor of Enceladus. Hydrothermal vents usually form at locations where magma and seawater meet. Water runs down the cracks right into the core, where it's heated and then comes back out again. Just like Europa, Enceladus is also believed to have a global ocean found under its icy surface. All of the data collected related to Enceladus points to the fact that it really does have the three ingredients required for life. Sadly, we still have no evidence about the life itself. Titan Voyager 1 was the first spacecraft to visit Saturn's moons. In 1980, Voyager 1 visited this region. 
Researchers went back and reprocessed some of the old images after Cassini had discovered Enceladus in its plumes. They noticed the jets were captured on camera even earlier. Titan was the main target for NASA's Voyager mission. Back in 1944, the astronomers used telescopes in order to discover that Titan had a thick atmosphere which contained methane. Thanks to the data collected by Voyager, we now know that it was mostly nitrogen, just a couple percent methane and a rather small amount of hydrocarbons. When Cassini got there it started doing measurements related to the atmosphere, and it started finding ions on top of Titan's atmosphere. Instead of finding things that had a mass of 78, it started finding masses of 10,000. That is nearly 800 carbon atoms, not 6 or 7 carbon atoms as previously thought. Just like the other two bodies Enceladus and Europa, this one is also thought to have liquid water beneath its icy surface. It's believed the ice crust is a lot thicker on Titan than it is on Enceladus and Europa. It's been suggested the subsurface oceans could hold life. Unlike the other two, Titan's liquid water beneath the surface is not the only environment for life. Titan features lakes across its poles. It's the only place aside from Earth known to have any liquid on its surface. Knowing the surface temperature is minus 180 degrees, we are pretty sure these lakes cannot contain any water. The mission by Cassini proved these are full of supercooled methane and ethane gases on Earth. On Titan, however, the liquid hydrocarbons creates the river valleys, form clouds and then forces rain. The Atacama Array is a radio telescope that can be found in the Atacama Desert. Titan is their target and all the data is publicly available. People have been discovering big numbers of new molecules in the Titan's atmosphere using all this data and information. For all we know there could be living creatures in Titan's atmosphere. What's still hidden beyond our solar system is completely unknown to us. With our knowledge expanding and technology fast developing, we hope that in the future there will be a lot more information about possible alien life out there. It's extremely important that we do our best to explore and know what's on other planets. For many years now humans have been searching for alien life. We have some high profile space agencies that have made it their goal to find life outside of this planet, but so far we don't have any concrete evidence. What we do have though are mysterious signals that have been picked up. In our past videos we have talked about the WOW signal, the mysterious signal that was discovered back in 1977. Recently the alien hunting artificial intelligence known as the Breakthrough Listen program discovered 72 fast radio bursts. In radio astronomy, a fast radio burst is a high energy astrophysical phenomenon of unknown origin manifested as a radio pulse. The artificial intelligence program has been searching for signs of alien life for years but up to now it's proved difficult. One of the reasons is because space is so vast. Over the years a large amount of data has been collected. One of the problems is going through all of this data. The huge amount of data collected was the main reason why scientists turned to get help from artificial intelligence, along with machine learning. Artificial intelligence and computers can work much faster than human beings are able to work. This has made the search for signals much easier. The fast radio bursts were picked up by the Green Bank Telescope. The scientists that were in charge of the program discovered the signals were coming from somewhere outside of the Milky Way. The researchers don't know what's causing the signals, and the scientists have said that if they're able to unlock the meaning of these signals it will help them to better understand who or what they're coming from. The exploration of space is important for our existence. With enough knowledge and technology out there we could actually travel through space live on certain planets and maybe even make a huge step in the evolution of our own kind. Another thing to remember is NASA astronauts have sequenced the DNA of the microbes that have been found aboard the International Space Station. This is huge news, considering it's the first time unknown organisms have been identified so close to outside of the Earth's atmosphere. With our increasing technology, scientists and researchers are closer to understanding where these signals are coming from. In the meantime we can only wonder about their origin. Scientists have many theories about why we haven't found any intelligent life, or why they haven't found us. Most of us believe alien life should exist after all. Since we haven't made contact yet, one of the theories suggests there must be something stopping us from communicating with other alien species. The barrier we speak of is also known as the Great Filter. 
Great Filter is described as an event or a force that stops certain civilizations from getting close to interstellar communication or travel. So what do you guys make of these signals? And where do you think they're coming from? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.